Hey guys, it's Greg from Big Goblin again, and today we're going to take a close look at Debian 10. You may already know of it as the upstream of Ubuntu. If you didn't, then I'm sorry for bursting your bubble. And it is very well known for being extremely stable. Some people love it, others hate it, and some don't even care about it. But most importantly, I love it. And today I'm going to show it off to you all to see if you like it or at least get you interested in trying it out. You know, get your feet a little wet. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. Old Faithful, stable as a rock, older than dirt. There are plenty of names and descriptions for Debian, usually referring to its age or at least its tendency to have what many consider to be an out-of-date software selection. Originally created in 1993 by Ian Murdoch and currently on version 10, codenamed Buster, Debian's primary focus is to provide a Linux distribution that is stable, which in this context is referring to its lack of major changes to software and not at all referring to its uptime and reliability while running in production environments. Though to be fair, its stability in this sense does also lend itself to a better reliability too. After all, there's nothing more reliable than something that doesn't change. More on that later though, don't worry about that yet. There's plenty more background and history I could go through on the project since it's been around since 1993, which is going on 30 years now. But, but I'm not going to go into all that since that, that's kind of boring. So let's get right on ahead into actually setting up and using Debian. Moving on to installing Debian, its process is kind of sort of similar to that of other Linux distributions. Although with an older looking skin and the installation options are in a bit of a different order than others you may have worked with before. After downloading the installer image of your choice and then booting into it off of a flash drive, you have options for your typical NCURSES text-based installer or a graphical installer, which is a little prettier, and both of which will easily guide you through the installation. Although it is a little bit different, there are only really two notable things about the installation process. First, watch out for the software selection screen. This will automatically grab groups of packages to give you a more complete baseline closer to what you need. Here I'd recommend selecting the desktop environment checkbox by pressing the spacebar and then scrolling down one to select the GNOME or a couple more for the Cinnamon desktop environments. And in case you're unsure, GNOME is a bit more of a new agey desktop and Cinnamon looks a lot like Windows does. The only other thing of note here is the screen that asks you if you'd like to participate in the Debian package survey, which actually now that I think of it comes first, so there you go. You can decide for yourself if you want to choose yes or no. It basically just sends the Debian maintainers a list of the installed software on your system that they then use to decide which software to include by default in their installation images. I would trust them with this data personally, but I also don't like sending extra information, so I usually go with no. After installation completes and you reboot your system, you'll be met with your standard Linux login screen. So let's log in and start poking around. How about that? Let's have some fun. All right, so we're sitting here at the Debian desktop with the GNOME desktop environment. Beyond the desktop background and theme that kind of goes with Debian, there really isn't a whole lot special here. Like there are no special extensions and other things added to the base di distribution that you wouldn't find on other Linux distributions with GNOME. Now, of course, with Debian and other Debian based distributions, you do have access to the apt package manager, which you use to install packages and update your system. In case you're not familiar, you do like a sudo apt install, say Chromium to install the Chromium browser. To uninstall the packages, you use apt purge. To remove unneeded packages, you use apt auto remove. And then to update your system, you have the apt update and apt upgrade commands. If you want a more in-depth explanation on that stuff, go check out the link in the upper right corner of your video, which will take you to my tutorial on how to install packages on your Linux systems. Now, as for the typical desktop performance on Debian, honestly, just running the top command, nothing seems too crazy. You don't have a whole lot of extra processes running that you would not expect. Processor usage looks normal for a system running idle, pretty much. And the memory usage also looks rather normal for a, again, idle system. While we're here, in case you care about it, some of the major included software versions includes Linux kernel 4.19, GNOME Desktop 3.30, Firefox Extended Support Release 78, and LibreOffice 6.1.5, and of course, many other software packages. These are just to name a few of the major software that you might notice on your system. And at this point, there really isn't a whole lot more to say about the desktop. It's a pretty standard Linux GNOME experience, just with a more stable base, which is a positive or negative, depending on how you look at that. And just in case you want to install Debian on a gaming PC with an NVIDIA graphics card, there is a process to install the proprietary NVIDIA graphics card driver, which will get you the best performance out of your system. 
the installation process really is not that difficult. You need to enable a repository, which enables extra software to be installed on Debian. And then all you need to do is run a couple commands, which will install the NVIDIA graphics driver and anything else it needs to run properly on your system. As for the AMD graphics card drivers, you can install the proprietary versions, but it's not necessarily recommended because the open source and proprietary graphics card drivers for AMD both perform very well, but the proprietary version only unlocks extra features like Radeon Chill and all that extra stuff that you probably don't really need or use that often. So it's recommended just to stick with the open source version, which is more officially supported in Debian. I will leave links to the NVIDIA and AMD graphics card driver installations in the video description below. So now that we've briefly gone over what Debian is, the installation process, and using it a little bit, let's discuss why you'd want to use Debian in the first place. After all, if the software is super old and there are constantly improvements being made to things like Firefox and graphics card drivers, why would you want to stay back on older versions? We've been told for years to keep your software and OS up to date for security patches and such anyway, so what gives? Well, the first reason something like this would be useful is for a business server or a workstation where your workflow and processes and especially uptime are more important than getting the snazziest and flashiest latest features. This is a lot more common and more important than you may think. You do still need to patch your systems routinely for security reasons and OS's like Debian will supply security patches and bug fixes, but will also not make any major feature changes to their software stacks unless absolutely necessary. So your systems will still work the same way as before until you're ready to plan for and execute the major updates, which in Debian's case is about once every two years or so. The other use case is someone who just wants a computer that just works. It sounds simple enough, and setting up a working system is pretty easy these days with plenty of operating system choices available. But how frustrating is it when you have a perfectly working system suddenly brick itself due to Windows updates? And the comparable thing here for Linux users would be updating an Arch system that requires special attention, and you've somehow missed the notification warning of said attention needed. It's terrible and honestly heartbreaking at times when you just want to get stuff done, play some games, send out some emails, whatever. And I can personally attest to having laptops that honestly I wouldn't touch for a week or two or maybe even three weeks. And coming back to it, needing to install tons of packages with gigabytes of download size and it takes a while to install. Some of us really just don't care so much about constantly maintaining a software stack and would just rather set it and forget it for a while so we can just use our computer. This is not to say, of course, that rolling release or at least more frequently updated operating systems are bad because there are certainly valid use cases for them. The first thing that comes to mind for me is if you're a gamer that needs the utmost performance for whatever reason, having access to updated graphics drivers can really help with that. Or maybe you're working with a system using bleeding edge hardware that just simply doesn't have the driver support for Linux distributions with an older LTS kernel version. Sometimes you just have to use newer software versions for that. And of course, as with anything else in tech, there really is no right and wrong. Now to wrap this up a little bit, you may be curious, what do I think about it? Well, it's actually what I use for most of my servers in my home lab actually, and I've had really good experiences with it over the years. Although to be honest, I've been fanboying recently over all my Linux, and that's kind of making headways in my lab, but Debian is still a very, very strong part of my infrastructure. As for desktop and personal computing uses, I've honestly been deferring to Pop OS. Since they have more updated packages, which has served me better for the high DPI display on my travel laptop, NVIDIA drivers on my gaming laptop, and on my desktop, I've actually sadly been using Windows, since that has been working the best for gaming and video production and all that kind of junk. But maybe Debian will make an appearance here soon, since I've been thinking about transitioning off of Windows for a bit now, and I kind of like the idea of having like an LTS distribution on my desktop. Anyways, that's all I have to say for this one, and I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are and whether or not you would use Debian. Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked it, which would be weird if you made it this far and didn't like it. But anyways, also join the Discord server to come chat with me up about Linuxy stuff, and I will catch you in the next one.